In this presentation, we will review reports and print reports after the first month of data input into QuickBooks Pro 2020 QuickBooks Desktop 2020. So here we are in our Get Great Guitars files. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view drop down up top and selecting the open windows list. We've entered one month of data now. So the first month of data has been input. We're going to take a look at the reports thus far for a few different reasons. One, to analyze the reports after one month of data. Two, to kind of be able to check your work or to check somebody else's work at the end of the month. Let's look at the best reports we can consider to, to check our works. We'll be checking our work here against what we have, uh, what I have. Therefore, you can check it to basically the answer key. However, uh, and that makes sense. So then you could tick and tie it out. But that's a good skill to have as well because you can kind of use the same kind of techniques to check your work when you're just entering the data anyways. We'll be looking at, the, of course, the balance sheet, the profit and loss. We will also be considering the uh, transaction detail report by date. We'll also print these reports and save them because this is often what you want to do at the end of the month to save this data. We'll also provide you with this data if you want to use a hard copy of it in order to review your work with. So we're going to go up top. We're going to print out our standard type of reports going down from the reports down to the company and financial. We'll take a look at the balance sheet standard first. I'm going to make the report as of 0131.20. So that's going to be the end of the time period. You could put the range, but uh, it, it, we're going to say at the end of the time period for now, it'll be the same. But when you do the range, you could double click and zoom into it. Now, note this is as of the end of January. If you, if you go through any of these items and you see that your number does not match this number, what you want to do is say you might be doing this at a later point in time or an earlier point in time and you have the date off probably most likely a later point in time if that's the case and therefore you can change the date that's the first thing we would check into so if you check these numbers we're going to say this is our uh, accounts you go through these and just tick and tie them off to the numbers you have if you're following along with the problem if you say oh no something is off then what we're going to do is say that's okay we're, that's what we're going to check into for so obviously whichever one is off you can use the zoom in feature to zoom into that detailed account you can also before you do that however say well what if it's a date thing what if, let's make this as of the end of the year and see if any of these numbers change i'm going to make this as of 12 31 uh, 20 and then go through these accounts again and say okay now that i've increased the date to a later date have any of these numbers changed if they have go into that account look at the the auto zoom of it and consider the detail within it see if any dates are wrong any dates are too late and then you can go back and put it back to the normal date i'm going to put it back here to to january 013120 this is what we might want to be considering printing as well as we if we were to provide this to somebody else how would we print it i'm going to print it a couple different ways we're going to print it as an Excel document and we'll print it as basically PDF files. Let's take a look at that first with the Excel export. I, I think the Excel export is really nice because you can print the reports and you can then use the reports to, to make one uh, PDF file. And at the end of the month, this is how we want to do it. We want to think about how we're going to group this information to make it look as nice as possible to present to somebody. Before I do that, I'm going to consider where I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it in this Get Great Guitars file. We're going to open that up i'm going to make a new file here i'm going to make a new file and i'm going to call this one just uh section six now you might obviously in real life i mean in a in practice you'd basically have the client name most likely and then the date that you would be including and within section six i'll go into it and then i'm going to say this is going to be for january january 2020 so we'll put this in there for January 2020. You want to think about how the folders are going to be sorted when you go into this. Do you want to sort by year by year? Uh, and, and how, and, you know, do you want the date, you know, the month first, the date first in order to sort your folders? It just depends how many sub folders you want to have on how you would want the, the dates to be sorted. So that's where I want to put it. I'm going to close this back out. Now I'm first going to export. So I'm going to select the export to Excel. I'm going to create a, a new worksheet. So we're going to export and create a new worksheet. This is one format that we can provide this information to the customers with. It's going to also be in a new workbook. So that looks good. I'm going to say export. Now here it is. I'm just going to clean this up a bit. I'm going to delete this first tab. Don't need it. I'm going to right click on it and delete it and say okay and then this is going to be the balance sheet so i'm just going to call it the i'll just call it balance sheet and we could call it for january we could say for january 
and so and then i'm going to go up top and you'll see that the pages are split that's going to be in the view tab so in other words if i went to this format the page layout view it'll say hey there's some frozen panes and it formats it kind of funny so to get rid of that kind of formatting funniness then you're going to go to the view tab up top you're going to go to the windows group and split get rid of that split and then you got the date up here you could delete that if you want but you got the balance sheet information you may not want this as you present to somebody so i might just say ah, delete that and so there's going to be our information and then we're going to go back to the, to the front of it and that's going to be our first report i'm now going to save this to the folder that we set up so i'm going to go to the file tab i'm going to say save as we're going to browse then to the folder that we have set up mine is on the desktop so i'm going to go to the uh, desktop my stuff is a little bit messy apologize for that if I, there should be a get great guitars folder here there it is and we're in section six and january documents now the name of this is going to let's just call it uh this is going to be the january financial statements let's say all right so we'll have that and i'm going to say save and the following features cannot be saved in macros uh, to continue saving as macro free i'm going to say yes we don't need the macros and so there we have that now why is it important to to save it in this format in excel because if we put all the reports in excel then we can put them all into one pdf file so that's what the end goal is or you can you can make some adjustments in excel that are a little bit easier or different to do in here than in the other format report which you may want to do as well so i'm going to close this out and then we'll go to the p l report reports up top we're going to scroll down we're going to go to the uh, profit and loss standard report changing the dates up top from to 01 31 20. so this is, these are going to be our numbers check out your numbers if the reports are off then what you want to do is say okay what if it's a date issue what if there's if there's a later date that i entered a transaction in then i can change the later date to 12 31 20 let's say and then you can consider if any numbers have changed if they have go into that detail the auto zoom check out the detail and see where if there is a date problem i'm going to bring this back down to january so i'm going to go 01 31 20 back to january the end of january let's go ahead and export this report this time exported to the to the excel document that's already saved and set up so i'm going to go to export i'm going to create a new worksheet but it's going to go to the same workbook so i'm going to export here we're going to say it's going to go to an existing workbook let's locate that workbook by saying browse then we're going to say it's okay it's on the desktop and i'm going to say it's in get great guitar and we're actually in section six now it should be actually in section seven i'm going to actually rename this right now i'm going to i'm going to right click on it and i'm going to make it a number seven i'm going to rename it to section seven section seven and then i'm going to open that up and it's in january's reports there's the uh financial statement so i'm going to open that up that's the folder we want the excel document and then we'll go ahead and export there we have it so i'm going to go ahead here it is i'm going to i'm going to delete the first one again right click and delete it and then i'm going to pull the sheet one to the right so i want to put my cursor on sheet one left click on it and pull it to the right of the balance sheet then i want to rename it i'll do that by double clicking on it calling it the i'll call it the is or income statement or p you can call it p and l and this is the january p and l same kind of process up top i'm going to go there's uh you can see there's the the split here which you can see better if we go to the page layout view so i'll go to the page layout view to check it out okay and then i'm going to go to the view tab up top we're going to go to the windows group and unsplit it and then you could delete this information if you don't want that there and go back to the previous view so there we have it so that looks good i'm going to go ahead and close this back out so i'm going to say close that save it and yes so there we have those two reports the next report we want to take a look at is the transaction detail report so we're going to go to the reports uh and we want the accounting and taxes and we want the transaction detail report transaction detail by date so this if anything is off on the balance sheet or income statement then this is the report you kind of want to go to to check that out so if we check this out this is going to be 0101 
uh, 20 to 01-31-20. This is all the transactions we have. And this is a great report that uh, if someone else is working, even if you don't have like the answer key to it, you can at least see how many transactions there are. Or if you're billing, you can by transaction, you can see how much transactions were involved in it. So you can go through here and you can check this one out. Remember, we have the type of transaction over here, the date, the number, if applicable, check numbers, other types of numbers, PO numbers, invoice numbers, names involved, customers, vendors, employees, memos. If we included a memo, the account that is affected and the other account, the split account, two accounts affected at least. Notice if it says split, there's more than two accounts involved and it can't be shown with simply the two accounts. So then you can, you can go through this data and just basically tick and tie it off. Now, if it's not in the exact same order, that should be okay as long as it's in uh, the same period that we are talking about. You should still be okay in that case. Uh, and so you want to go through through here, and, and that means you just basically have to tick and tie it off. Uh, I would actually print out the report and tick and tie it. That's probably easier than putting your finger on the screen and trying to take it out. But either way works. And so you'll go through here, and if all these transactions are in, as they as they should be or as they're showing here then your data must be correct unless uh, the the beginning balances were off so if there's something that is wrong here something that's not included something let's say there's something on this report that's not included on yours then you want to check the dates again so we'll say okay let's check the date and go to 12 31 20 and see if there's any added detail now if there's any added detail it's probably because there's a date over here that's past January and then you want to go into it double click on it change the date of it bring it back to the proper date so that's going to be this report I, now this report's a little bit longer notice again we can we can uh, change the size with these three dots and and of the columns we want we can do more stuff to it once we export it so let's go ahead and export this report I'm going to say this is going to be as of 01 31 20 and now let's export this one so we're going to go to Excel we're going to uh, create a new worksheet and then we'll export it into an existing workbook it should be finding the correct workbook that is it double clicking on that we're then going to export so here we have it once again i'll delete the first tab so i'm going to right click on it right click on that tab and delete it okay and then we're on the sheet one tab i'm going to pull it to the right once again left clicking on it pulling it to the right so there is that and this, I'm going to just call it transaction detail for January, TD January. So we'll put that there. Then we can uh, take a look at the second view. If we go to the page layout view and say, okay, we can see we have the breaks there again, go into the view tab up top, windows group and split. We can take the splits out of it. Now, this one isn't one you want to want to print like this. So you may want to change something like the orientation. So you could go up top and say, okay, I'm going to, uh, go to the page layout and possibly change the orientation in the page setup group to landscape and that could help it it's going to print sideways now which if you attach it to the report might look a little funny but it should help now there's some other things we can do before we have to force it to print on one page we can go back here and say hmm well what if i delete all these kind of columns that don't do anything here right i can highlight these i'm going to hold down control and and select all the columns that have no data in it so let's we'll say what if we take these out and i don't think the cleared columns are doing much for me that i'm going to take that out and then right click on those selected areas and delete them right and that takes us back that takes us within range so that looks pretty good so now we have this report and we can we can print uh, this one out and we can print all all of these uh, reports out so i'm going to go ahead and save this now if we want to print this out in one report now to have one pdf file we can just simply go to the file tab print i'm going to use that cute pdf printer which is a free printer that you can that you can use you have to then go to the print not the active sheet but print the entire workbook print the entire workbook then it'll print each page into one PDF file. And so you can get it all in, in, in essence, one PDF file there. You got one page, it doesn't have much on it, but that's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and say print that. And then we will save this to our lo location. The PDF printer will give us then a search field. Within the search field, I'm going to go to the desktop. 
We're going to put it into the Get Great Guitars folder, Section 7, January, and there we have it. So there is that. I'm going to close this back out. And then if we go back to where, where it is on our, in our desktop, Section 7, January, now we got the Excel document and the PDF. Opening up the PDF, we then have the reports that are going to be on one PDF file. So we have the one PDF file, here's the balance sheet, and then the income statement. That's really nice to send somebody. So if you're sending somebody, this is kind of impressive. You know, you can put it all on one PDF file and be like, well, how did you put it on one PDF file? And that'll be easier. Otherwise, you can put it on multiple attachments, which could be you know, a little bit annoying if you have a lot of reports, but not too bad. Let's do that real quick. How would we do that? We'd go to the to the balance sheet and let's just uh, let's just we could save it as a PDF file. I tend to keep using the PDF printer because that Matt that that will work no matter what report that you are using. So if I was to print this out, uh, I could just say print. And again, you could say save as a PDF. I'm going to go ahead and use the PDF printer. So it's going to be going to that printer. We're going to print it. And then the PDF printer will give us our information here. I'm going to put it in section seven and I'm going to just call it uh, balance sheet. Uh, balance sheet January uh, 2020. So we'll say save it. And then we'd have to do the same for the pro profit and loss. Go into the profit and loss. Go ahead and print it. You could save it as a PDF. I print it using the cute PDF printer. We will then print. And I'm going to save that into the same location. So we'll say, all right, this is going to be, and you might want to put this right underneath so you can see that's the profit and loss for January. So I'm going to call it uh, profit, profit and loss for January 2020. And we'll save that one. And then we'll do the transaction detail. So if we go to the transaction detail, now this one's a bit more tricky because if I go to, to the print uh, report, then if I don't change some options on it, it may not print on one page. So if I go to the preview, it looks like it, looks like it is printing on a page. So it looks good. Uh, they may have adjusted the size of it, but we're going to close that back out. It's got the printer, the cute PDF printer portrait and it says down here fit report to one page so they kind of forced it to fit to one page which means the text is going to be a little bit smaller but you know that's we can keep that instead of instead of manipulate you could go in and manipulate it and try to keep the text the same size but we'll just print it out so we're going to say print and then we're going to have the cute pdf printer here and i'm going to call this one the transaction list by date transaction list by date and again we probably want january 2020 so there we have that so we'll save those and then if we were to consider what's in our our folder now if i go into the folder we're going to say then all right we're in section seven now we've got these three reports we could attach those one by one to an email in three reports, not too bad, but if you get like five or more, then you probably want to group them some other way. Another way you could group them that you can attach them to something like an email is to put them all in to uh, the, the, the one folder. It's January reports. And we'll just take all of them, put them into that folder, and then zip the folder. Right click on the folder and uh, zip the folder so you want to send to a compressed file and what that does is it makes it compressed but it also makes it something that you could put in on as an attachment to an email whereas you can't attach this folder you can only attach the individual files this makes it a little bit nicer uh, to view so yeah if you're trying to and again presentation is kind of important so you want to have either here or you want to have uh, basically sending it in this format with just one file. One of those methods would probably be the nicest format to send it in.